So in this video I'll show how to set digital denture teeth in the Blue Sky Plan Denture Module. And so last video I showed how you import all your models and get them in the correct position. Once you click the button to continue on to the denture planning, this will be the first screen that comes up. And I should mention also that if for whatever reason you cancel out of the wizard and you're just stuck right here and you don't know how to add the teeth, simply come up here to the plus sign with the tooth beside it and hit that and you'll be right back to the same screen. So here we need to choose which library of teeth that we're going to use. And you've got the choice, first of all, do you want to use virtual teeth or do you want to use physical teeth? If you choose the physical teeth, then these are going to have the nobilium teeth options that we have, and there should be more of those uh, integrated into the software very soon. And so if you're going to do this option, this would assume that you're probably going to mill or print a denture base just with sockets. But then for the teeth, you're going to actually grab those physical teeth from Nobilium and then bond them into the denture bases that you've created. If, on the other hand, you want to make a fully printed or milled denture, then you need to choose a virtual tooth set. And that's what I'm going to do here for this example. So you've got several libraries available. I'm going to use the Mitch Hurst Pontic Library. And what I want to do is select all of the teeth, since this is upper and lower dentures, and then click OK. You'll come back to the screen and you'll notice that there's a tooth hovering underneath your mouse arrow. And what you want to do is now come over to the models. And if you look closely, you can see this is a uh, right central incisor. So I'm going to come over to the area of the right central incisor on my models, hold down the shift key on your keyboard, and then left click. And that will drop the entire dentition into the case. So here you see that the teeth have been dropped in and it will automatically default to have this widget available because you can globally position the entire dentition within the case. And so unique to this patient, we're going to try to align the new teeth to his current set of dentures. We had already determined that that was an acceptable VDO, uh, that the tooth positions was pretty good, and we're just trying to improve upon the fit. And so we're just taking this widget and the first step that I usually do is I will take this anterior or posterior until the facial surfaces align, assuming again that you have a reference denture or a wax rim where you've determined the anterior position of the teeth. If not, then usually what my reference point is is to just drop the facial of the teeth right underneath the depth of the vestibule and that usually puts you in the right, in the right position. Here I'm referencing the teeth though, so now I can look at them from the anterior and I can go up and down until I make the incisal edges coincide. And so that looks good. And then finally, you could reference the midline and try to line the midlines up. You've always got the grid, which you can turn on and off. If I turn this back on now, you can see that the grid uh, gives me an indication of where I need to go right to left to make this all align. So that looks good, and then finally we just need to align the occlusal plane, and so you can grab the widget rotation rings and rotate this around until you make the occlusal planes coincide. That might require that you move around a little bit with the arrows to line up the anteriors again, but this looks like a really good setup. You can always toggle on and off the visibility of the model. If you don't see this teeth surfaces panel, Simply come up here to Panels and choose Teeth Surfaces. And then you can just check on and off visible on the menu of the different STLs that you've got available. So this setup is looking very close. We're 90% of the way there. However, the first thing that jumps out to me when I notice this is that these teeth overall seem to be scaled far too big for this particular patient. And we've got second molars that are sitting back here in the area of the hamular notches and on the retromolar pad. That's obviously too big. So there's two ways that I can deal with this. First of all, I could go to panels, open the denture design panel, and when you do that you're going to see a slider at the bottom of the menu and we can adjust the scale up or down. So if you wanted to you could scale these teeth to much smaller and then move them into a, a more accurate position. The only reason I don't want to do that here is because by scaling all the teeth, I'm also scaling down the size of the anteriors. And you'll notice if I go back to where it originally was and then turn back on the original denture, 
The anterior teeth seem to be aligned pretty well. The size of the canines forward all seem to coincide, so I don't really want to scale those teeth down since these are going to be what drives the aesthetics. Rather, what I think I would rather do is to just delete the second molars and we could just go with first molar occlusion. That's a very common occurrence in dentures and I think that would work out very well. So if you look over here in your tooth surfaces panel, you can go and find the four second molars and then just hit the red X beside them and this will delete those. So I'm going to do that for all of the second molars. And now with those second molars gone, this looks like it's fitting much uh, better in the overall shape of the arches. We're now 90% of the way done with our setup, and the only thing that I'd like to do now is to make sure that the teeth are sitting over the center of the ridge. Remember that um, when you pull in the overall dentition, they have just a particular position they've been set in, and your patient may have a wider or a narrower arch, and so you can move around the teeth so that they center over those ridges a little bit more accurately. I'll do that by going back to the denture design panel and what I want to do is hit the button that says show and hide tooth chain but there's going to be an issue. In this particular case because I've deleted some of the teeth that messed up what we refer to as the tooth chain and we've got to reestablish that before we can proceed and move individual teeth. And so to redefine your tooth chain it's a very simple thing to do. You need to make sure all the teeth are visible and then simply come back up here and hit the button that says mark the visible teeth for chaining. By doing that it reestablishes the proper distance between the teeth and it will allow you to now turn this tooth chain button on and when you turn on the tooth chain button you're going to see a bunch of nodes appear over each tooth and what these allow you to do is to now lock the teeth at a particular position and then you could rotate and hinge all of the teeth behind that off of that distal of the tooth that you locked. And so I really want to make sure that my teeth are sitting over the top of the mandibular ridge because that's the one that's going to have the most trouble with stability. So what I want to do is hide this model. You can toggle it on or off here or you can right click this model and hit toggle visibility. Now I can see very clearly when I look from above that the teeth seem to be sitting over the top of the ridge fairly well on this side. If I look over on this side though it looks like from the first premolar back needs to all hinge outward toward the cheek and that's going to allow them to sit over the top of the ridge more. So what I'll do is lock the tooth at the canine and then I'm going to hinge the entire posterior quadrant over to sit on the top of the ridge. I want to make sure though that when I do that that I make sure this button is checked on that says move opposing tooth because if you don't have that on, let me show you real quickly, if I now were, was to hinge these upper teeth, you see that it leaves the, the lower teeth behind and you lose your occlusal relationship. We don't want to do that. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. You want to check the button on that says move opposing tooth and now we can hinge the entire posterior quadrant. So the way you do this is you hold down the shift button and then let's grab the maxillary tooth just distal to the one that we locked and holding the shift button, I'm going to left click and then holding that left mouse button down, I'm going to make the movement that I need to swing those teeth over the top of the ridge. So in one quick and easy movement, we've now finished our setup and everything is in the proper position to proceed with making the bases. Now, although I don't need to do it in this case, I do want to show in this tutorial how you would do individual tooth movements should you need to. So let's suppose that you were setting uh, just maxillary teeth against a lower natural dentition, you're always going to have to do a bit of tweaking on the occlusion to get those correct. And so we could hinge the entire quadrant if needed. You could hinge individual teeth. So if I locked the tooth on either side, I could now hold shift and move a particular tooth up and down. You could also do that maintaining the occlusion as you see right here. And then finally, if you want to make individual rotations to teeth, you need to turn the tooth chain off and rather go to manipulate model. When I highlight the manipulate model button, this allows me to hover over each individual tooth or for that matter, you could hover over your models and you can move all of these individually. So let's suppose that we wanted to add a little characterization to this lateral incisor. Maybe the patient brings in a picture of them when they were younger and they had a tooth that was slightly overlapping and twisted, then you could make that change. Um, 
Again, I don't really want to do that for this particular case, but I just wanted to show you that that is possible. So you can make as much individual tooth movements as you want. It's just that for a typical denture, the goal is to try and expedite this process as much as possible. So the less of that kind of characterization I can do, the better. For most patients, they want an ideal setup, and this is going to get you there very efficiently. So with the tooth setup now complete, we are ready to proceed with making the denture bases.